Okay, now we're going to talk about the next set in uh, Kulo Wing Chun. It's called Ji Ji Chong Q. Okay, and there's this set has some variation even in the name. Sometimes it is Ji Ji Kum Q, with the Ji meaning slicing fingers and grasping bridge is what Kum would mean, K U M. Grasping, just like in Kum Na. So Ji Ji, slicing fingers. Grasping bridge, and then sometimes you'll see it as di ji chong q, and the di is like in di da jiao. It means iron. Di di ji is iron finger, and chong q, just like the chong q form in it man, it can mean sinking or searching bridge. In this case, it means sinking bridge. So, iron finger sinking bridges. So it it can get kind of confusing. I think there was probably some mistranslation at some point since. Kum and chum sound so similar, but regardless, I like to refer to it as ji ji chum q. Ji ji being slicing fingers, chum q, collapsing bridges or sinking bridges. Ji ji chum q. And this is closely related to the wu di chung set that we did in a prior lesson. So, the classic set looks like this. You pivot and you're striking low. This is your iron fingers or your your slicing fingers because it goes out and this is a, a low strike and and I I get this slicing or iron finger since that there's a flick here like a groin strike you're fucking right to the groin so it's this dropping flick and then there's a rising motion and a distinct poxao guai choy as a big motion and then it turns so again, it's a three count, like most sets. One, two, three. 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 And there's this big, it's a big motion. And it's going high, sink, rise, boom, a big motion. And if you refer to a prior lesson we did on the Cup Dasal set, the Cup Dasal was a cover hit hand, which was classically, it's this motion. So you can see how this is related. So originally, this was one of the two-man applications of this big motion. And then eventually, it was just kind of broken out into a set of its own because it got used so often was so important. This fast flick. It's the same motion. The guachoy. Guachoy with that sinking strike. Remember, we did a Wing Chun boxing version like this. So that's where that set comes out of originally was this Chi Kung Kyu. But this is important in its own right because it's using, again, teaching, just like in the Samjin Choi lesson, we talked about it taught sink and rise, right? The Samjin Choi was strike, sink, rise. This one is the same thing, sink, rise. So, and a big concept in this one is that idea of fake low, strike high, or fake high, strike low. That fast switch of levels is an important concept. So this might have been a fake to get the guy to drop his guard, and then it's this big boom, come over the top and hit him. That's one of the central concepts. Go low, he drops his guard, and then trap and hit. Or I could reverse it, yin and yang, right? If I can do, if I can start with and do it this way, I can also do it this way. With the idea that I go high, I exaggerated motion to really draw his attention. I do something that draws attention, and when he rises his arms to react, Whack, that's when I snack, smack me in the, in the groin, right? So this big motion, boom! So that's this whole idea of going from one to the other. So you can add another beat to this, and you can do it low, high, low, right? Low, high, low. Just to get that sense of I can go from either one, from high to low, or from low to high. And that's an important concept here. And of course, you see this in boxing all the time too. I'm boxing. I might fake low and hit high, or I might fake high and hit low. It's the exact same concept in this set from Kulo Wing Chun. Now, it's closely related to the Wu Dip Jung set, because think about it, in the Wu Dip Jung set that I showed you, it's a splitting motion and a strike. And this strike, if I exaggerate it and make it low, is this exact same strike from the Ji Chi Kung Kyu. So sometimes they'll combine the set just by doing that three count Quan Sao first, and then instead of doing this, I do this. 
boom, bam, and I'm back. And then that low strike and over the top. Because remember, we talked about the Wu Dip Jung set being to split and make an opening to strike. It's the same thing here. I could have been doing something. I split and make an opening, and I drop down, slamming with this hand, and then right into this set. So kind of combine those two sets together pretty easily. And that's the Ji Ji Kung Chung Q. Now, another important idea is this idea of the Chung Q. So we got the concept of going high to low, faking high, striking low, or vice versa. But then the chum cue is sinking bridge. And so in the most people's yip band form, you have this chum cue motion is usually here. And some people consider this a distinct motion. And some people just think of it as I'm just resetting my arms so I can step with the bong sao again. Well, from a kulo perspective, it would be this. So it would be more like doing the bong sao and then sinking over the top to pin something this way, like this. That would be how you would put that concept from this set into that chunk cue form. This idea here, and I'm coming over. That's why it's a big distinct motion. I could be below somebody, their hands are high, and I wanna sink their bridge, so I come over the top, I bring the bridge down, and now I can strike, right? I come over the top and I can strike. My hands are low, I sink their bridge, and I strike. That's the chum cue portion of this set, where this looks like it's just a cover and strike. It can be that sinking bridge idea into a strike. Boom, that big sink, sink the guy's bridge, strike. Chum cue, okay? And we'll show it on the dummy and show it how it relates to the Wu Dip Jung set as well. But again, this is a pretty simple set. It's just strike low, come up, strike over the top. Boom, boom. the side. And I don't have to change it too much to call it Wing Chun Boxing because it's already got this Guai Ma drop which is very box boxing like. So I just essentially still do it that way. I don't really change it any for Wing Chun Boxing. GG Chum Q, GG Chum Q on the dummy. Basically it looks like this. That strike coming down I can see as not just a strike, but it can be a deflection at the same time. So I'm coming out, and boom. And since the dummy arm won't move for me, I have to move out of the angle, right? So I can go past the dummy arm and strike. So there's a little step as I do the guai ma. I'm centered on the dummy, and I step out. See, I'm tracking the arm, boom, and I'm hitting to the groin. So that'd be like I've, I've stepped out and I've deflected their kick and then hit, or deflected a low punch. And, stroke, and just stroke through for the hit. That's the sense here. Boom. So I'm low. Now as I come up, I'm doing the big pox out of this arm. Boom. And this arm sweeps around. I'm not hitting my dummy, because that would be painful even on my padded dummy. So I hit, and I'm coming down because the way I've angled on the dummy, now I can come down across the top of this arm right here and get that resistance. So I'm hit, boom, right? And now it's going to be a big step to this side. I kind of throw in this for security. I step out, boom. And then I'm coming up. I pop out on this one and into this arm. All right, got the idea. I'm stepping out, deflect, hit into the groin. Then the cover, coming over the top, boom. And that big motion to come down. And say I'm forced, the dummy forces me to make this a big motion like in the set. I can't just, I can't just sort it and flick it, flick it around because there's no room. So the dummy encourages that big motion to clear and come up. Right? And then I'm stepping off to this side. Here, strike. And then this big motion to clear and come up. Step off, strike. Boom. Step off and strike. Boom. Step off and strike. Now I can, like I said, we can combine the GG Chum Q with the idea from the Wu Dip Chung. So it's simple. I'm doing the Quan Sa motion, splitting motion, like we did in the Wu Dip Chung set. And I could have been doing this one. Boom, boom, boom. And I just 
just decide to throw in from here. Instead of doing this, I step out, bam, bam. And I can be right back into the set again. Boom, boom. And then I decide to do, I just insert it into the wool dip jump set. Or I could have just been going one, two, three, hit, hit, right? And then one, two, three, hit, hit. I just add the Quan style to it. But the, the way this really works, and it's nice on the dummy, is I practice both sets at once. I practice the Wu Dip Jung set, and then instead of doing the double, the, the Wu Dip, I throw in the boom, boom instead, and just blend it together kind of randomly almost. That's the benefit. Now, this whole idea of being chunk you, sinking bridges, I like to kind of emphasize that aspect when I teach it to my students too. So it almost looks like the Wing Chun set, I mean the Chum Q It Man form, but not quite. Now, instead of starting low, I'm thinking of my Bong Sao being high, so I want to collapse somebody's bridge. I'm here, and then I come across this way. So now instead of a punch, as I'm coming across, I'm doing the Pot Sao, and this becomes a Chum Sao, that sinking hand, either with the edge or with the back. It's like that. And then I'd step here, and then I'm going to pivot and put it on this side. Step, and then chum cue. Step, chum cue. Step, chum cue. Step, chum cue. Right? That's how I bring out that idea. I'm doing something. I'm going to collapse their bridge so I can hit. And even on the demo, I can put that in, right? I'm going to hear. Step, chum cue. Bong, chunky dip. Bong, chunky dip. Bong, chunky dip. Bong, chunky dip. Right, and I just blend that into everything else. But that's Chichi Chunky.